Hi guys, like to welcome you guys all back to my channel and today I am here to have a chat about a book that I read. So the first book that I read of 2020 is Persephone Station by Stina Leach. Leach. I think it's Leach. Um, but I'm going to put the cover right here. Um, this was one of the books that I was looking forward to reading as one of the new releases for this year. And I think the best way to say is like I, I, ex I wanted more but it wasn't terrible. So if you guys haven't heard, Persephone Station is a s adult science fiction. Um, they call it like a space opera kind of thing. And um, if you look at the like, what is the book about? It's, it uses, it says it's like a space opera for fans of The Mandalorian and Cowboy Bebop. That is what initially like dragged my attention to this book. Plus I really liked the cover. Now we're gonna open my reading planner <laughs> because I did take notes um, so that I could uh, show you guys. Uh, the Purple Washi is how long it took me to read this book. I listened to this book via audiobook and I forgot the narrator. I forgot to write down the narrator. So what I'm gonna do is put the narrator's name down here. I like the narrator um, for this story. I felt like her voice was good. I gave I gave this book a full three stars. And the reason that I gave it three stars was um, the book was supposed to be very suspenseful. And I did not really feel the suspense. Um, I actually, the, I guess I will focus on the positives. The positives, in my opinion, um, the cast is full, is all women and non-binary though. That is, that is the full cast and it's done in a way where there's no explanation. It's just how it is. And for me, like I've, like I've said before, I appreciate representation um, from all realms, race, uh, gender, whatever, I respect the representation that is given in books where they don't have to take a moment to like explain why it is. It's just is. So uh, there is a, there are multiple non-binary characters and um, the, let's see, we have, I took notes again. I don't know why I'm veering off from notes. So for characters, we have Angel. Angel is a former Marine who was exiled. She was, she originally was like a part of this secret Kung Fu school and she was exiled and that's when she joined the Marines. Um, so she's a former Marine. She is the leader of the mercenaries in this story. Um, we have Rosie who is non-binary and they are, uh, I guess basically like a crime boss and, um, they started off one way and then they turned into a crime boss. So I'm trying to give the least amount of spoilers as possible. Um, then we have Vicia, who is basically the antagonist of this story. We have Kennedy Liu, who is an AI. So we do have AI in this story. We have alien um, first contacts aliens, um, community aliens is what I'm going to call it. Um, <laughs> I wrote on here, everything started so well and then crashed. And this is, this is basically why I'm saying this. I believe that this book was, or had potential to do really, really well. I just think that everything that was started was not properly executed. So I wrote, I'm just going to read what I wrote first and then I'll continue from there. So I said, all the women, it's all women in non-binary cast loved. I think it fell short. The beginning started off so promising, but most of the book was exposition and lots of info dump. The actual story was about Angel and her team protecting the natives from Visia, even though we spent time trying to build the stakes to nothing. I just didn't feel the intensity or the dire need. Love that they called their ship Kurosawa 
everything felt unfinished and rushed. Okay. So I'll try to explain this. Um, I never say like it's, it might be spoilery. It might not. If it is non-spoiler, then that's what it'll say in the title. If not, I'm trying. So the story starts off just immediately. It immediately starts off from the jump and you're thinking, awesome. We're going to have action all through this book. And the way that the, the, I'm going to break it. I don't, I'm going to break the book up into three sections. So the the primary or preliminary part of the book, part one, um, very high stakes. There was a lot. There was murder, assassinations, uh, murder attempts, burglary attempts, fighting. Um, all of that was in the first part of this book. And so the way that the book starts off, you kind of think that the characters are in danger constantly. That's what the book kind of makes you believe, like they're supposed to be in danger. However, we move into the second half of the book and it's just basically explanations. Um, we get a lot of explanations about Kennedy Liu, who is an AI who was built with human emotions. Um, we have obviously Rosie's story, Vicia's story, Angel's story, uh, Suki's story. We have everybody's stories. So by the time... I'm supposed to actually care about the characters and their story. I realize they've never really been in danger this whole time. Like, I don't know if there was a way that this could have been better. I just feel like the middle part of this book added no value to the story. I did not feel that their lives were in danger. And then the third part of the book, everything happens within the last two hours of the audiobook. So I don't know what that is in the actual book form. But basically, I knew that it was going to be rushed because we had gotten to the, the last two hours of the book and I realized nothing had happened yet. And so the ending that we got was very, very rushed. The ending that we got was very clean. It was a very clean cut finish. Um... And the way that the story was written, you kind of feel like there should have been more. There should have been something. And it just, it was like, it's one of those books where like everything cleaned up perfectly. Everything. But the way that the story started off, you just knew that people were going to die. You knew that there was, there had to be some kind of betrayal. You knew that, that things were supposed to pop off and they didn't. Even the scenes where they were supposed to actually be fighting and stuff, I didn't feel any intensity. Usually when I read fight scenes or war scenes or battle scenes, the ones that are written like intent the ones that are written with a level of intensity, I freak out. I'm like, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap. And I like I'm flying through the pages because I'm so into it, but I'm also like, oh no, hopefully nobody dies. Hopefully nobody does this, but the way that the scenes were written, I just knew that everybody was going to survive. Like, um, I knew if somebody was going to die, I knew which character it was going to be and why. I knew, like, I knew too much and I cared very little about the characters. And so I just wanted more. Um, for example, Rosie's character is very complex um, because Rosie's background is kind of what forms the story. Though the premise of the story that we're described is that it's actually Rosie working with um, Angel um, to do something for Persephone Station, in a way, yes, but what it turned, it turned into something entirely different. The antagonist of the story didn't really have any type of issues with Persephone Station. Uh, the antagonist had a very one-dimensional, evil, selfish motive, and it just didn't match with the beginning of the story. It didn't match with the secondary part of the story either, to be honest, because it was like she, the the antagonist had one specific reason for why they did what they did. And they did not vary from that. They were very one-dimensional. We didn't really get much explanation for why it happened in the first place. We were told that something happened, but we were not told why or how or 
um, anything like that. We were just like everything was revealed as an exposition rather than actually being a part of the scene. And it was kind of just like, oh, well, I'm the person who did this. I'm the person who did this. And it's just kind of like, I would have preferred if the reveals were t- were shown to us rather than just having dialogue explaining everything. And so because we had constant dialogue, constant exposition, it just felt like an info dump um, a lot of the times. So I gave it a solid three because I felt that the world building was fantastic. I kind I got a good visual of Persephone Station and it's not a place that I'd actually want to live. Um, I got an, I got a decent idea of the way that their space government operated and, um, I got an understanding of the way that Persephone station ran. So that was cool. Uh, I love the idea of like this space kind of thing and then it's all women. So the mercenary team was all women and it was vastly a variety of women. We had a lesbian, we had, um someone with a illness. We had a chick who just liked to get down, which we always appreciate. Um, And we had Angel. And so there were a lot of elements of the story that I really liked. Like I liked, like I said, I liked the characters too. I just felt like the story was not executed well enough to give it anything past a three. I'm not saying it was a bad read. I just recognized that there were some critiques, um, I, oh, and then another thing is the epilogue of the story just, again, it wraps everything up so perfect. Like, like a gift wrapper at a store just wrapped it, stuck a bow on it and was like, fantastic, finito, we're good. So I'm not sure if I would recommend Persephone Station um, unless you want to talk about it. Like I'm one of those people where... I try to watch reviews after I read a book so that my opinions aren't shifted while I read the book. Um, So if you haven't read Persephone Station and you'd like to, like, I do want to know what you think. I do want to know how you feel. Um, What did you like? What did you not like? And uh, yeah, that's my little feel on Persephone Station. Um, I do not plan on actually buying that book and adding it to my book collection behind me. Um, but yeah, I would like to know what books are you guys reading? What was your, what was your first read of 2020? Let me know down below in the comments section and until the next time guys, bye.